Hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to share with you today kind of an introduction to one of my favorite plays by William Shakespeare, a hysterical comedy called Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, as you know, uh, the, the summer times, the days are very, very long and the nights get shorter and shorter. And the shortest night of the year is called Midsummer Night. And it's somewhere around June 21st. Uh, but in the old days, they called it Midsummer Night. And it was a special occasion for a party or, you know, kind of a, a lucky day to have a wedding. So in Shakespeare's play, Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, it's set in uh, Athens, Greece, in the time of ancient Greece. So you have to picture people running around in togas, uh, like sheets on, and, and the girls with flowers in their hair, and all of that kind of stuff. And... Uh, uh, the story kind of opens with the great news that uh, an important duke is going to marry uh, a queen. And this is kind of a big event, and everybody's excited about it. And um, while the duke and the queen really don't play much of a part in the story, their wedding has everybody torn to pieces. Um, they're going to get married in an enchanted forest which is near Athens, and is just beautiful, and it's the wonderful, most perfect site for a wedding. What they don't realize is that it's an enchanted forest because it's full of fairies. And, uh, you know, like little woodland imaginary creatures. Um, and what they don't realize in addition to that is that this is not a real good time for the fairies. The fairy king, whose name is Oberon, and the fairy queen, whose name is Titania, are fighting. Uh, they both want the same, uh, the same servant. They both feel like the servant ought to belong to them. And so the king and the queen of the fairies, unknown to the human beings, the king and the queen of the fairies are just, they're, they're, let's just say they're not getting along. And so the king of the fairies has his group, all the, all the guy fairies, and the queen of the fairies has hers, all the girls. And, uh, and so they all, they're all being sucked into this, this real drama between the fairy king and fairy queen. And uh, ultimately, the, the rest of the fairies would like this just to be settled because it's going to cause everybody a lot of trouble. But the human beings, they just think, oh, we're going to go into the enchanted forest and the duke and queen are going to get married. Now, like I said, the duke and queen, they're not real important characters. And in fact, uh, they really don't even need to show up in the play. In the end, yeah, they're going to get married and uh, they're going to kind of watch everybody, um, but they they don't really play much of a role in it, but everyone is really excited. In fact, because the Duke and Queen are getting married in the Enchanted Forest, other people are thinking, wow, it's Midsummer Night, and the Duke and Queen are getting married. Um, maybe we ought to get married in the Enchanted Forest, too. This would be a great time for a wedding, right? Um, so it so happens that we have uh, four young people, two boys and two girls. The girls have been best friends since forever. They've grown up together. They're best, 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 best friends. Their names are really kind of close to each other. So I've chosen to bring in some help. This one represents a girl by the name of Hermia. Okay, Hermia. She's sweet. She's like a little lamb. Uh, and she's loving. Okay, now her best friend is a mess. Her name is... Helena, okay? Now, Helena is, is, she is just full of drama. And the whole world could go stand on its ear. Helena only cares about Helena. And Helena has a problem. In fact, Hermia has a problem, too. Well, let's introduce the two boys, and I'll tell you why the girls have such a problem. First of all, Hermia is really in love with a fellow by the name of Lysander. Oh, Lysander. She loves Lysander. Problem is, she's rich, he's poor. Her dad says, you're not marrying that dumb Lysander. He's not anybody. He's never going to be any good. You're not marrying Lysander. Lysander's out. And in fact, her dad says, not only is he out, 
but you're going to marry a fellow that I've picked for you because he's rich and he's going to be famous someday. His name is Demetrius. Okay, now the problem is, here's Demetrius, he's rich. Hermia doesn't love him because Demetrius is a jerk. Okay, he's a first class, completely stuck on himself jerk. And she knows that. Her dad doesn't care. He says, you're going to marry Demetrius or you're going to go live in a convent for the rest of your life. You don't have any option. You're going to marry Demetrius. And so Hermia, who's been a really good girl her whole life, is thinking, I think I'm going to find an option C, um, which might mean run away with Lysander, her precious Lysander. Now, let's talk about why we know Demetrius is a jerk. Demetrius is a jerk because he dated Helena forever. But when he got the the idea that her best friend's dad, who's really wealthy, would like him as a son-in-law, he threw Hermia to the side. And now he's like, so, Hermia, I heard you've got lots of money. We should be married and be like, you know, married. And Hermia's like, I wouldn't marry you if the whole world was on fire. Okay? So that's our that's our our situation here. So you've got poor Lysander. Lysander's the guy with the boat. Okay. Lysander is is heartbroken because he wants to marry his precious Hermia, but her dad says no. Demetrius, he's the guy. He's like, I'm the MVP. Demetrius is like, I don't care about my ex-girlfriend. I'm going to marry her best friend because she's got money. And Helena is like, the whole world needs to pay attention to me. Okay, so those are the two guys and two girls and kind of what's going on in their life. And then, of course, the rest of the community is really torn up over this wedding that's coming up as well. There's an entire group of workmen. Now, you got to see these guys, right? They're like, uh, oh, I don't know, they're house builders, they're carpenters, they're plumbers, they're, they're ditch diggers, like they're rough guys, right? Dirty and messy and stinky and smelly, but they sense an opportunity for a big party. The Duke and the Queen are getting married, are you kidding me? So they get the idea that they're going to put on a play for the Duke and Queen to celebrate the Duke and Queen's wedding. So <clears throat> these workers, they start talking about arguing over what kind of play it ought to be. Well, it's going to be a play for a wedding, so it has to be romantic. But they don't have any girls, so they're going to have to have guys to dress up like girls. And they're going to be like, you know, oh, I love you so much. And it's going to be like this the tear jerker. It's going to break everybody's heart. It's going to be so very romantic. Well, there's one particular guy um, that gets on everybody's nerves. He's one of the workers, and his name is Nick Bottom. Now, if your last name is Bottom, I'm sorry, but Nick Bottom wants to be the star. He's like, I'm going to be the star. And everyone's like, Nick, you can't. I'm going to play all the roles. Nick, shut up. You okay. So they agree, Nick, you can be the star. Nick Bottom, the star of the show, right? But nothing, they're, they're like, you know, practicing their play and they're writing their play because it's going to be brand new. And nothing is ever good enough for Nick Bottom. He's getting on everybody's nerves. Every time we see him, he's like, no, 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 it's got to be this way. I think it'd be better if it were this way. And so Nick, one of the workers, is getting on everybody's nerves. So cue the action. It's going to be midsummer night. Okay, sun is setting, and here we have Hermia, who is running into the woods to meet her beloved Lysander. Oh, Lysander, I love you forever. And they're going to be married secretly, even though her dad doesn't approve, and they're going to live happily ever after. That's the plan, okay? The problem is that she lets her best friend know. Remember best friend Helena? Best friend Helena's like, mm, 
Is that what you think? Okay. Well, she really doesn't care that the two of them are getting married. In fact, she's kind of glad they're getting married because um, Demetrius, her ex-boyfriend, will therefore be on the rebound. And so what does she do? When these two run off into the woods, I'm going to meet you in a little while in the enchanted forest. They run off in the woods. Helena says to Demetrius, so... I guess you're single now. And Demetrius is like, what are you talking about? I'm not single. I'm going to be married to the beautiful and rich Hermia. Um, no, I don't guess you heard, but Hermia ran off to meet Lysander in the Enchanted Forest, and they're going to be married tonight, and then uh, you're going to be single again, and so what do you think we go out? And uh, Demetrius is like, what? No! And so he goes running into the Enchanted Forest as well. And this leaves poor... Helena just crying. <laughs> okay, well, unbeknownst to any of them, the fairy king, who's been in a foul mood, he's refusing to talk to his wife. He happened to overhear this conversation between Helena and Demetrius, in which Demetrius is like, I'm going to get Hermia uh, back, and I don't care about you, and I'm never coming back to you, so blah. And so he takes off. And, and and poor uh, Helena is just sitting there crying, crying, crying. Okay. So King Oberon, who always thinks he can fix everything, right? He always thinks he can fix everything, even though he obviously can't fix his relationship with his wife. He thinks he can fix these young people. He thinks, I'll fix it so that Demetrius falls back in love with Helena. Problem solved. Problem solved. Then uh, Hermia and Lysander can get married. And once Demetrius falls back in love with Helena, everything's good. So Oberon goes and he gets my favorite personal character in the entire story. His, like, right-hand man, okay? Um, his official name is Robin Goodfellow. He's he's a woodland sprite. He's like a, a, a little creature of the forest. But everyone calls him Puck. Um, in fact, we have a word today in the English language, puckish, which means like puck, which is um, playing pranks on people or uh, getting involved in things just just to make things worse, right? So Oberon goes and he gets puck, and he's like, hmm, I, I need to tell you something. Um, there's this guy, and he's really being cruel to his ex-girlfriend, so I want you to go, because Oberon's not going to do anything for himself. He's going to send puck to do everything. I want you to take this magic love potion and I want you to go and I want you to find Demetrius while he's asleep and put this magic love potion on his eyelids and when he wakes up, whomever he sees first, he's going to fall madly in love with, right? Madly in love with. So, a little hint about uh, Shakespeare. If somebody has a potion, it's going to work every single time, right? So, Oberon, the king, gives Puck the magic love dust that he's to sprinkle on the eyes of Demetrius so that Demetrius falls in love with Helena. Problem. Puck wasn't there to see which boy was which. And so Puck goes into the woods and he finds, not Demetrius, he finds Lysander. Okay? And Lysander's asleep. Lay down, Lysander. And he puts the magic fairy dust in uh, on his eyelids. And when he wakes up in the morning, who's he going to see? Actually, he doesn't sleep all the way to morning. He just kind of gets disturbed. Who does he see? Lysander wakes up and wrong girl, wrong girl. It just so happens that here comes Helena. And he's like, oh, my darling, I'm in love with you. And she's like, wait, hold on. No, you're in love with my best friend Hermie. And he's like, Who's Hermia? Can't stand the thought of anybody but you. Uh, uh, let's get married. And she's like, wait a minute. You came into these woods to marry my best friend Hermia. I've already forgotten all about that. I've got to marry you. And she's like, whoa, you're messing with me. This is not funny. It's not funny. And he's like, I'm not trying to make a joke. I love you forever. And she turns and runs. And so he goes running after her. Well, what do you know? Hermia wakes up from her little nap, and she says, Lysander, Lysander, and there's no Lysander. 
they're supposed to be meeting and there's no Lysander. And she's like, <gasps> Demetrius. She sees Demetrius creeping around the woods and she's like, Demetrius killed Lysander. Ah, uh, and so she's like, uh, my life is over. I, I, the, this jerk of a guy that my dad wants me to marry has just murdered my true love. Uh, and she's making so much of a racket that Oberon's like, the king of the fairies comes back and he's like, you got another girl crying? Uh, Lysander, Lysander, uh, right? And so Oberon, who never does anything for himself, goes back to Puck. And he's like, Puck, you idiot. You messed this up. Okay? You put the dust on the wrong guy. You gotta go fix this. And so Puck goes back out and he finds Demetrius. And this time, right guy. Dust in the eyes. Okay? And Helena comes back. And here's her ex-boyfriend that she's been mooning over, mooning over. Right guy, right girl, right, right guy, right girl. He says, I love you with an undying love. And she's like, you're messing with me too. So Helena cannot believe, she can't understand, first of all, why either one of these guys would automatically just fall in love with her out of the blue because she doesn't know about the magic fairy dust, right? So she's like, you are a jerk. And so she runs off and he runs off after her and Demetrius and Lysander are both chasing, not Hermia, the sweet loving lamb. No, she's left heartbroken because both of the boys want the other girl. <laughs> well, what a mess this is turning out to be. So Puck, the king's right-hand man, runs into the queen's right-hand girl and says, um, you know what? Oberon gave me this magic love potion, and when you put the dust in the eyes, then, uh, you know, the first person they see when they wake up, they fall in love with. And so the, the fairies come up with this plan. Well, let's put it in the fairy queen's eyelids, Titania. Let's wait for her to go to sleep, and then we'll put the dust in her eyes, and when she wakes up, she'll see Oberon, and she'll fall in love with the king, and she won't care who gets this servant, and we can all go back to just living life normal. Ugh, we're so tired of all this drama. And so beautiful Titania goes to sleep in the forest and her own servants conspire against her and they put the love potion on her eyelids. Well, things are not going to go well. Puck happens upon the workmen. Remember the workmen with all of their, you know, we're going to make this heartbreaking, heartrending play. They're like, now they're getting frustrated with each other and they're calling each other names and they're like, no, you're supposed to kiss her. And then, you know, I'm not going to kiss her. That's not her. Well, you know, well, you got to cry. You got to cry. I'm not going to cry. Your character's got to cry. Or this isn't going to be a good play. And so the, 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 the workmen get on Puck's last nerve, especially who? Nick Bottom. Nick Bottom gets on everybody's nerves. And so Nick Bottom says... You know, I'm the star of the show and everybody has to do it my way. So Puck changes, using his little magic ways, he changes Nick Bottom's head into the head of a donkey, okay? And the rest of the workers, they don't know this. They didn't see it happen. They just know that, you know, Nick Bottom goes back behind the scenes and he's waiting for his line and he walks out to say his line and there it is, human body, head of a donkey, and the workers go, ah! And then they go running off into the woods in every which direction. Ah! Ah! And they're waking everybody up. And uh, Nick Bottom doesn't know why they're running, but if everyone else has got to run, I better run too. So he takes off running into the woods. Ah! No idea why anybody's chasing him or anything like that. And no idea that he's got the head of a donkey. Right, none whatsoever. Well, um, who should wake up and see him but the queen, Titania? Titania wakes up and sees. Now I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell you this. You see this performed on a stage. It's hysterical. The queen wakes up and she sees a guy with a donkey's head, and she falls like flat in love with him, like stupid in love with him. Well, um. 
he ends up with a little bit of the magic fairy dust on his eyelids and he falls asleep in the queen's lap. When he opens his eyes, he sees his reflection in the water and he falls in love with himself. Oh my word, it's a mess, right? So the queen is like, oh, I love you, Nick Bottom. And Puck is in the background going, oh, I have messed up. So anyhow, um, Oberon comes in and he's just as angry as he can be. Ugh. I guess I gotta do things myself. And so he he uh, uh, takes the love potion off of Titania, and there she is. She's like lovesick for this donkey-headed guy, and all of a sudden she like comes to herself, and there's this donkey head, and she's like, what? And Nick Bottom is changed back into a human being, and he runs off into the woods trying to find the rest of the guys. So that's solved. And then... Um, Lysander, um, who had been incorrectly in love with Helena, he gets he gets uh, demagicized, uh, and he's back in love with wonderful Hermia, like he should have been from the very beginning. Right? These two were meant for each other. And uh, Demetrius, the jerk, he doesn't get demagicized. He's in love with Helena. And that's okay, because Helena was in love with him from the very beginning. And so uh, everybody goes to sleep that night, and they wake up in the morning, and it seems so crazy that they figure it must have been a dream, right? Midsummer Night's Dream, that's the name of it. They're like, whoa, that was nuts. I had this dream that I had a head of a donkey. Uh, are you kidding me? I had a, you know I had this dream that you were in love. Anyhow, everyone's like, let's just not talk about it. So they go to the wedding of the Duke and the Queen, and Nick Bottom and his guys get up and put on this dramatic, romantic play. Only they're so terrible at it, everyone thinks it's supposed to be a comedy. And so everybody's roaring with laughter. And uh, uh, the... Puck, uh, Robin Goodfellow, and uh, a couple of the other fairies, they sneak onto the stage and they bless the wedding. So in the end, the Duke and the Queen get married. Hermia marries Lysander. Demetrius marries Helena. And everybody gets a big, big blessing at the end. And, uh, you know, and Puck closes out the play uh, with the famous, you know, uh, if we ghosts have thee offended, think but this, and all is mended. Um, you know that the, he tells the audience, you know, if you don't like this play, well, just pretend like it's a dream. That's a dream, and you'll wake up from it uh, tomorrow, and you'll think, oh, I dreamed I saw a bad play, and that's the end. And I'm going to tell you, it is one more hilarious play to see performed in person. Hope you get an opportunity to see it sometime. All right, thank you. More next week.